Bonjour, my name is Alice, welcome back to my channel. I want to start with this article, it went viral a few weeks ago, it was written by Nate Jones, it's an article on Nepo babies for Vulture. The article is titled How a Nepo Baby is Born. It covers the rise of the phrase Nepo baby, nepotism baby, referring to the famous artists who benefited from their parents' popularity to become popular themselves. The article features a number of Nepo babies, some of them I didn't know were actually Nepo babies, and that's one of the reasons why the article went viral. You know, how how could you not talk about it? I mean, the article triggered a waves of haha, got you, uh, posts, videos, articles, but the enthusiasm to search and find those Nepo babies quickly turned into resentment as people realized that, god damn it, they are literally everywhere. That's why the discussion online quickly changed from let's hunt those Nepo babies to Okay, they are all nipper babies. Well, let's decide who are the good ones and who are the bad ones. TikTok videos were made on who actually has talent and who hasn't, who deserves a fuck you and who doesn't. Of course, there's some irony to that, but still, there was something in those videos, in the article that bothered me in a way. It's only when I saw this video from a small creator that I managed to pinpoint what it was. She made a little video um, looking at what different nipper babies said about their nepotism when they were asked about it. In the video, Nepo babies are presented as either good or bad, and what determines in which category they are is based on their ability to recognize their privilege and almost apologize for it. As an example, Kendall is judged as bad because she refused to do so. To emphasize how bad she is, the creator compares her to her fellow models. But saying that she had it harder because she came from a famous family is a slap in the faces of all her fellow models. There are models who are living paycheck to paycheck, whose income from their modeling career is the only thing supporting their family. But for Kendall, if she doesn't get a job, she's not going to starve. And her last name does go a long way towards protecting her from the ugliest side of the industry, like sexual harassment. So that is all very true, but let's take our time and look at what is actually happening in this video. The creator makes a deliberate choice to use an experience outside hers, that of underprivileged models, to materialize what is morally good and then contrast it with Kendall. Kendall is morally wrong. She refuses to recognize her privilege while good models are starving, living paycheck by paycheck to support themselves and their families. By arguing that, the creator shows that they are politically conscious, that they are aware of inequalities between privileged and underprivileged people. Because of that, the creator also appears as morally good. They are an ally of the underprivileged. However, using the language of progressivism to assign a moral value on an individual is, in my opinion, counterproductive. In fact, it's one aspect of cancel culture that other leftists here on YouTube have already criticized. So let's take an example here. Let's look at the part on Gigi. Next up, we have her fellow Nepo baby model, Gigi Hadid. Gigi says, I come from a successful family, but my parents were freaking hardworking. They worked their asses off and they have given me a life because of their hard work, and I work hard to honor that. I love that. That is so eloquent. Gigi is also a Nepo baby. She's privileged, so technically there already is a negative moral judgment on her. However, Gigi recognizes her privilege and claims that her parents worked super hard and she wants to honor them by working just as hard. As a result, the creator's judgment changes. She's so eloquent. She's a good person. It's the same thing with Jamie Lee Curtis. The actress said she didn't have to work hard and definitely got a leg up. She recognized her privilege and therefore the creator validates that. She has earned the good Nebu baby label. Finally, Gwyneth Paltrow is put in the same category as Kendall. She refuses to recognize her privilege. Again, the creator uses the arguments that other actresses and Thai family could starve if they don't get the job, which helps makes Paltrow look even more despicable. So the video contains two messages for me. The first message of the video is clear. You being a Nepo baby is wrong, but you have an opportunity to change that by publicly recognizing your privilege. If you do so, then you become good or neutral. We the people don't resent you anymore. The second message of the video is that Nepo babies are morally wrong because they didn't earn that success. They operate outside meritocracy and should be condemned for it. Only Gigi is praised because she still works hard to pay respect to her family. That type of criticism is limited because it reinforces the assumption that some people work hard and deserve to be successful while others don't work hard enough. Sure, those who don't work hard enough here are rich people, it's different from the toxic if you're poor, that means you didn't work hard. But in the end, the rhetoric is rather similar because it hyper-focuses on the individual and their character, behavior, assessed as either good or bad. 
worthy or unworthy of success. It tends to forget that those individuals, whether they are privileged or, or not, are the products of systems. My point is not to say it's not the Apple baby's fault. I mean, they're really happy to take advantage of the system and reproduce it over generations. My point is that I think that it's rather limited to spend time figuring out who's a good Nepo baby, who's a bad Nepo baby. Similarly, I think it's quite limited to figure out who's a good capitalist, who's a bad capitalist. I'm more interested in the system that produced them. I wanna be honest with you and I want to ask you a question. What would you do if you had all the social and economic resources to do whatever artistic job you want to do. Well, I'm sure you'd give it a try, right? I'm pretty sure that most people would do exactly what those Nepo babies do. Because most of us love the idea of having a creative job or being famous, being heard, talked about. In her video on Envy, which was inspired by the work of Nietzsche on the genealogy of morals, ContraPoints argued that people's resentment towards celebrities, privileges, in our case the Nepo babies, is rooted in envy. The frustration that we can't have what they have so easily. So it's easier for us to blame it on the babies, to portray them as evil and feel good for not being like them. I mean, it's crucial to keep celebrities, privileged people accountable, I'm not saying the contrary. However, an honest criticism must go beyond the subjective moral judgement. It has to be structural. In other words, instead of saying f nipple babies, we should rather say f capitalism or f the family, as we'll see later. If you want my opinion, I think that everybody should have the opportunity to explore their creativity with the comfort of financial security. As anthropologist Graeber once said, just think what kind of culture, music, science, ideas might result if all those people were liberated to do things they actually thought were important. So if the question is one of personal responsibility, I'll say, let's just give anyone enough to live on some sort of universal basic income and say, okay, you're all free now to decide for yourself what you have to contribute to the world. Then sure, we could say that people would be responsible for what they came up with. And sure, a lot of it would be nonsense, but it's hard to imagine 40 to 50% would be doing nonsense. And that's the situation we have today. He was referring to bullshit jobs here. And if we get even one or two new Miles Davises or Einstein's or Freud's or Shakespeare's out of the deal, I'd say we'd have more than made back our investment. Okay, now let's explore another argument in defense of nipple babies. In an article published in Elle in late 2022, Lily Depp shared her dislike for the phrase nipple baby and her association with it. She said, quote, It's weird to me to reduce someone to the idea that they're only there because it's a generational thing. It just doesn't make any sense. If somebody's mom or dad is a doctor and then the kid becomes a doctor, you're not going to be like, well, you're only a doctor because your parent is a doctor. It's like, no, I went to medical school and trained. So that's a fair argument. What Lily Rose Depp is describing here is what sociologists call social reproduction. Nepotism is one instance of social reproduction. Nepotism is defined as the practice among those with power or influence of favoring relatives, friends or associates, especially by giving them jobs. Inspired by the work of Karl Marx on social reproduction, sociologist Pierre Bourdieu wanted to draw attention to what parameters allow that reproduction to happen. Among them he saw cultural capital, economic capital and social capital. Let's take the example of Lily Depp to see what that looks like. Lily is the daughter of French singer, actress and model Vanessa Paradis and actor Johnny Depp. As soon as she was born, she immediately took advantage of her parents' economic and social capital, namely their wealth and their connections. As she grew up in artistic, creative households, she also developed a cultural capital. She learned what was good music, what was good cinema, she was surrounded by it, she saw it. All forms of capital are connected to one another and even magnify one another in a way. For example, Lily Rose Pound's social capital allowed her to meet various people in the film, music and art industry and expand her cultural capital in the process. Economic capital also means you can access art and education more easily. That's why a lot of new rich families pay a huge amount of money to send their kids to the best universities, um, the best courses, to get taught how to play this instrument, how to sing, how to act. So you see, each form of capital can help compensate for an underdeveloped one. Most of the time, the social, economic and cultural capital of your parents will be similar to yours. Social reproduction isn't limited to rich people, as Lily Depp highlighted. Working classes, middle classes, socially reproduce themselves as well. 
the kids of working class people are less likely to pursue a university degree. The kids of middle class families are more likely to become doctors, lawyers, managers, etc. In fact, I thought about making this video after I checked journalist and activist Naomi Klein's Wikipedia page to decide if I wanted to include her in my list of role models. And I realized that most of her family was already involved in activism, journalism, feminism, etc. She grew up surrounded by that energy and those values. So. Is she a nepo baby as well? Or is it just natural that you work in a similar field to that of your parents? The answer is yes, it is natural, but that doesn't mean it's fair or that it should systematically be that way. In fact, nepotism is proof of the power of families in a capitalist system. Capitalism as an economic model cannot survive without the family. It serves to ensure the passage of capital from one generation to the other so that it continues to grow. It also serves to relegate care to the private sphere you know, family members, not the state, have to take care of each other. The family is a place where economic, social, gender and racial equalities are perpetrated. Some families transfer and grow their cultural, social, economic capital, and other families struggle to do so. Over generations, the wealth gap between those different families continue to increase. Nepo babies are one way for us to witness those family inequalities. So next time you hear someone complain about Nepo babies and their privileges, I want you to be that annoying leftist. I love to be that annoying leftist. And throw a, yeah, we should definitely abolish the family. Even if you're not entirely convinced and just look around and see how people react. I think it might trigger some interesting conversations. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, the conversation continues in the comment section. Don't forget to like, to subscribe, if it's not done already. Thank you to my patrons for supporting what I do. If you want to join my Patreon, you'll find a link in the description box. We have a book club, we have a Discord chat where we talk about pretty much anything and everything, really. And a special thank to Donaj, Alex, Sam, Manuel, Dakota, Jay, Benjamin, Oswald and Carla. And yeah, I'll see you very soon, probably next Monday. Um, is that it?